On today's show, the finer points of fishy adventures. This one has a lot more bite marks. Best expressed by two young anglers. Yep, fish, got them. Who experience Lake of the Woods' biggest fish. Oh my gosh! This story starts in a place called French Portage. Researchers release hundreds of hungry creatures in the name of conservation. And a few on-road rules for bike riders. Minnesota Bound. Presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura Millie and I welcome you to today's episode. Up first, it's a bucket list adventure, and it's no secret that Lake of the Woods is one of our favorite destinations. Yeah, I am so excited because I get to share this place with my family. Here's why. Lake of the Woods, an absolute freshwater giant. 14,500 islands and a lifetime of water to explore. Every year, like clockwork, we visit Totem Lodge, an iconic Ontario port of call run by Dustin Brown and his family. This is heaven on earth. This is, uh, is getting away from it all. This is, this is as good as it gets, I'd say. This trip, I've come with my two boys to go off Totem's grid. It takes a lot to navigate your way to French Portage. We're gonna go on a 40 mile trip today down the lake. I am so ready. It's tucked away from it all. Eric, thank you. Thank you. See ya. Fishing is going to be, it's, it's going to be the highlight of your trip. You guys ready for a little adventure? Let's go. The boat trip from Totem Lodge runs more than 40 miles out to Totem's lonely French portage outpost. It's too far to come from the US side, too far to come from the Kenora side. It was pretty long. At some points there, it was pretty sketchy because a lot of rocks in the middle of the lake. The definition of Canada adventure. Pretty cool. It feels like we're in the middle of nowhere. Until you pull into French Portage. Wait, wait, where's our cabin? So the cabin is a 10-man cabin. It's got its own private generator out there. It's like a townhome in the middle of nowhere, which is super amazing. You're kind of in the middle of the best fishing that's untapped. A lot of people don't go there because it's just the distance is too far to get to. We come for the cabin, but stay for the fishing. This one has a lot more bite marks, so it should be better. Muskies wander this part of the lake. North American giants that prove elusive for so many anglers. It's a game of patience. In this boat, the muskie game comes with more questions. Do you think we really need this big net? Then answers. How far are we from the cabin? Like two minutes? This is awfully good. Muskies, a sport of little guy challenges. You really have to work and put in the effort. Keep going. There he is. He's a monster. Keep going, Brady. Good. He's on it. Keep going. Rod tip down in. Is he still there? That was a monster. His head was like... <laughs> That's the thing. If you cast long enough. Why does my one just want to they will. my one shot? Questions eventually lead to answers. Come on, fishy, fishy. Oh, missed it. Go, go. It's scared. 
me so much. And then Brady's like, cast back, cast back. I just wanted to just eat it. Totally. Go, go, go. Yep, fish, got him. Hold on, no. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. <laughs> oh my goodness. Got him. <sighs> Let's go, Brady. Oh, ah. Look at that. Woo. Look at me. Bennett, get in there with your brother for one. Yes. It's crazy, bro. Congrats. So amazing. So cool. You're all wet now. That's why we do this. Well, that and all the questions. What do muskies do during the winter? Especially the single best of all French Portage inquiries. Look where we are. How do you beat this? It, it's gorgeous. You're, this place is heaven on earth. It's just amazing fishing, so you have fishing that you don't have anywhere else. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Coors Light, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, and by White Bear Lake Superstore. Muskies might be the big fish of 10,000 casts, but if you head to Lake of the Woods, that math can quickly change. The best part of waking up on Lake of the Woods might be big breakfast and the view. <laughs> Cabin life in an outpost called French Portage. Kind of makes you a little bit nervous because you're away from everyone, but you don't see like any boats anywhere, so it just feels so nice to be alone. You just have all the space you need. No schedule. Somewhere back in here, there's supposed to be some gangster cars. Apparently there's some old gang that was like smuggling liquor. Have you heard of Capone before? The rumor is they were driving their liquor to hide it. And then they had to ditch some of their cars. Look at that thing. Is that bizarre or what? When was this? 40s? 30s? Careful. It feels pretty sturdy. Oh my gosh. It's kind of spooky. You can just see all these rusty cars in the middle of the lake and you're like, how did those get there? It's honestly pretty cool. This lake, my summer love. Water with a sudden nickname. Heaven. For me, it's heaven because of all the muskies. Last night, go, go, go. Brady's big fish came out to play. You have fishing that you don't have anywhere else, and that's kind of what I like about it. Woo! Today, all three of us try and squeeze and cast between summer squalls. We're probably just gonna go musky fishing around here and hopefully we get some follows, maybe even another musky. So Brady, he's super good at fishing. My dad just drives me to the fish and I guess I catch them, not him, so. Mostly whenever he gets a super good cast, that's normally when the muskies come. Good 
in the boat. I was kind of freaking out because one muskie for me is kind of a big benchmark and then two is crazy. Yeah. Put them back job, in. Two muskies in like 15 hours. Dang, bro. That's why we come. Memories made for the little guys. And this big guy, too. He's always just super happy and proud of us. This lake, this place, and these fish change people. A 14-year-old might say it best. I just want to go out every single minute that I'm here. It means the world to us, each and every person that's been coming up and supporting us this year and staying with us. Been a really tough couple years with COVID and the borders being closed. We're really excited to welcome everybody back. Still ahead, we go back in time as Belinda Jensen helps share her rules of the biking road. But first, the conservation story of Minnesota grazing. Closed captioning provided by. Star Bank. We all know the importance of getting rid of invasive species from our landscapes, but it's not so easy to do. Good news, there's help available, but it's not from your normal groundskeeping crew. If you're looking for a landscaping crew, we've found one of the hardest working teams around. And they can't wait to do their job. Ah. The goats aren't here to mow a lawn. Their task, eat invasive species. Yeah, so we're out at Graham's Park and we're standing in a 24 acre field that was historically hay field. So there's really no pollinator habitat, no biology to support our wildlife. Local business Minnesota Native Landscapes offers four legged alternatives to help restore prairies. Yeah, the goats and sheep are actually employees of ours. They are some of our hardest workers. <laughs> Restoration often includes getting rid of destructive plants. What's more common in Minnesota is common buckthorn, but there's glossy buckthorn starting to pop up in this park in the woodland. Buckthorn is rather amazing in that it grows about four weeks longer during the growing season than native vegetation. It inhibits a forest's ability to regenerate itself because it's out competing um, little tree seedlings. It's shading out the forest floor completely so native flora are not able to, to grow and thrive. Just so happens that non-native vegetation for these goats are number one on the list of tastiest snacks. Honestly, that's just their favorite. Uh, they love buckthorn. They love the woody, leafy stuff, you know. Uh, they can even eat poison ivy, poison oak. They can eat all of that. There's really not much that's, that they can't eat. I think they love their job. <laughs> there is a method to the grazing madness by combining goats and sheep together. I believe we have about 250 total animals out here today. As goats tend to like grazing on things that are like your knee and higher. 
The sheep tend to like grazing on knee and lower. It's very, very different to approach it with the animals and the livestock, but it's much more effective and it's re regenerative agriculture. In addition, grazing is gentle on native greenery. With the native vegetation, they will eat it, but it's not gonna kill it. Oddly enough, when it comes to important pollinator plants, the hungry grazers tend to leave those alone. The annual milkweed, they leave alone, so that will be allowed to be available for the monarch caterpillars. Why use restorative grazing versus other methods? We're really trying to reduce the amount of herbicide we use in our parks, and we were waiting for a way to do this native prairie without the use of chemical. Not to mention the cuteness overload effect of munching critters. It's uncanny the way they go after buckthorn. It's kind of like a velociraptor. That's what it reminded me of. The end goal of this project? If we plant it next spring, three to five years after planting, the prairie will start to look like a prairie. We're putting in a large nature playground next year where children can play in and with nature. Healing our prairies one native plant at a time, helped by a few hundred living, breathing weed eaters. Up next, a bike ride back in time as Belinda Jensen shares a few safety tips for your next adventure. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Midwest Exteriors MN. Game Fair. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back to the year 1997. To the day Belinda Jensen shared a few safety rules of biking on the road. We're in the Fort Snelling State Park riding along the road. I'm with the St. Paul Bicycle Racing Club. We're going to be telling you all about the road rules and street smarts to keep you safe. These are veteran cyclists. They have trained and raced all over the world, but lately they've experienced road rage from aggressive drivers. People will yell at you out the window, throw things at you, try and spit on you. In the worst cases, they'll try and run you off the road and use their vehicle to try and injure you. Instead of flipping somebody off, maybe take the next right-hand turn and come around back onto the road at a later time, just avoiding people at all costs. A vehicle against a biker, the vehicle's always gonna win. It may seem like an obvious rule, but you should underneath. always wear your helmet. Experts say 80% of head injuries can be prevented by a properly fitted helmet. When it's underneath, it's not sliding around. It's a good fit. One of the most common accidents involves a car door opening in the path of a bike. You must pay attention and anticipate the driver's movement. If you're commuting, carefully pick your route. Avoid heavily traveled roads. Try a route one block off the main road. It might have less congestion and less exhaust. Here's another hazard, sand and gravel. If you can't avoid it, power through it. Don't stop pedaling and don't brake. Use your ears too. You need all of your senses. Never wear headphones and watch out for loose dogs. I've been chased several times by dogs and almost gotten hit by a car just trying to get out of the way of the dog. I mean, I'm scared of them. It can be intimidating, but cycling is a great workout and you'll see so much more of the world than you would from a car. With some of the road rules, I'm Belinda Jensen. <laughs> Those rules still hold true today. Millie, good job today. It's time to wrap this thing up. We all hope to see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook. <laughs>